one standing at home, uh, stand up our daddy. Hey, get that kid out of that bedroom in there. Uh, uh, get that get that ice cream out of that, that, that boy's hand. Uh, we're at the time for church. Amen. Uh, Y'all listen, pay attention. We're going to sing Love Lifted Me. It's 255. You got a book at home. Uh, everybody should know it. Great old song tonight. Number 265, Love Lifted Me. Good to be here. Let's sing. Amen. All right, you ready, everybody? Ready, sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now say, am I? Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Hey. Oh, I sing out now on the second, ready? All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Sing it, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Good. All right, on the last, ready. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saved. He will lift you by his love out of the angry way. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Sing it. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, good evening. We sure welcome all of you here tonight. And those that are back yonder, we've got, uh, we've got uh, people scattered out around here tonight to try to comply with uh, the rules going on right now for a few days. But we're really, really glad that you're with us tonight. And we're going to start off tonight with a very special song by Sister Marty T. Bullinger. And she's going to come and sing. So come on up here, Sister Marty T. Bullinger. And she's going to sing. And then we're going to do some other stuff here this evening. Hope everybody's tuned in and ready to ready to go tonight. And uh, just have a good time in the Lord. All right. Let's all uh, give her your attention tonight as she sings for us. Go ahead. Well, Job was a righteous man, the devil couldn't doubt it. He surely loved his Savior, there was no doubt about it. Satan cursed his body from his feet to his head and told him of all his children and his cat over dead. Well, Job's wife said, won't you curse God and die? Well, Job said, a woman, speak like a foolish child. Oh, he ain't never done me nothing done me nothing but good nothing but good good job thank you sister bullinger uh that was a blessing wasn't it uh they, we practiced a little bit on the way down frank been practicing his songs and uh i don't know where he's at right now he's back in the other uh the campus uh back there uh, so maybe we'll have him in here in a minute, but it's good to see everybody here this evening. A couple things right quick. For all you that are watching at home, make sure you get your Bibles open and get ready. Uh, we've got a message for you here in just a minute. And uh, here's, our, here's our announcements right quick. Um, 
we, uh, we'll be having service Wednesday night, our regular Wednesday night service. We're looking forward to it. Um, we ain't called off a service in 42 years, and I ain't going to start now, by the grace of God. And as long as we can be here, if I can, if I'm able, we'll be here. And uh, so tonight, I hope that you'll plan on being with us uh, Wednesday night, either here or online. We'll make do the best we can. Uh, everybody's been saying, till this is over, or till this is over, it might be, if it may never be over. Uh, things may never be back the same. So you better get your heart right with God. For all you folks sitting at home, it is, it's an easy time to backslide. Very easy. Uh, more people backslide this time of year normally than any other time. When the weather turns warm, and you just go crazy. It does this every year, so just calm down. Uh, let's uh, uh, stay right with God. Stay in your Bible. Stay praying. Uh, stay right. Uh, let's let's honor the Lord and do what he'd have us to do. That's the best way out of this mess. And we're going to come out on top one of these days, here or there, or over yonder on the other side one day. Now, um, also, we're going visiting Saturday morning. We had a real good time of visitation. Um, yesterday, me and Ethan went, and some others went. Boy, we had some good visits, just sitting, talking to people, just out on the front porch and uh, staying six or eight, ten feet away and just praying with them. It just meant the world, people, just come see them. So uh, if you want to do that, we'll do that Saturday morning. And then we're going, uh, Andy, we're going to be working Saturday, getting everything set up for our big Easter Sunday service next Sunday morning. Now, uh, weather permitting, if it's 80 or 90 percent chance of rain, of course, we'll just have to do like we did today. But we are planning a huge drive-in parking lot service next Sunday morning. Uh, we've, we've got the rules they're recommending about parking and everything. Now, we're going to ask everybody listening to me that, that's coming next Sunday. Uh, you're going to come around this way, come in our regular parking. Uh, there will be parking attendants out here. And you, you must adhere to where they're going to tell you how to park and where to park. So uh, everybody can get in and everybody can see. And so that'll be next Sunday morning. Don't forget that. We're planning. I, it, it just, I just can't imagine not going to come to church on Easter Sunday. I just can't. That's just beyond imagination. So all you that are at home, plan on being with us next Sunday. Uh, we'll have our Sunday school out there. And then a big Sunday morning Easter service at 11 o'clock next Sunday morning. So don't forget that. Don't forget that. And uh, pray you'll remain in your cars and uh, we'll have a platform set up, music and everything. Big special day out there. And uh, we got a set of speakers, Lord in mercy. You can hear it in Hickory. Uh, now we get them things set up out there. And that might be what we need. Amen. <laughs> so don't forget that too. Okay. All right. Now we're going to uh, go ahead and our offering and for you that are wanting to send your offering in. Now, if you're out of month, you're out of church for a month and you have no offering, uh, that, Lord, I don't want to think that about y'all. That's a bad thought, but I hope that you're, hope that you're giving and honoring the Lord. We will be set up this week, Lord willing, uh, y'all come on ushers to be able to give online. It's a link you can, you can hit and be able to give your offering online this week, Lord willing. And so if you're behind, need to get caught up. Good time to do it, and uh, if you if you want to do that tonight, good time to do it tonight. We have got several in the mail. If you want to mail it in, it's perfectly safe to do that. Address it to Post Office Box 177, Nebo, North Carolina. 177, Nebo, North Carolina, 28761. I'll say that again in just a minute. So get your pen to write with. We appreciate all of you that, you, that we've heard from. Uh, we uh, we believe during these times, if the Lord still blesses us, we should bless others and bless the church. And that's the way it should be. So let's do that tonight, okay? All right, let's all stand. And while you're getting ready, uh, don't forget that. Post office box 177, Nebo, North Carolina. I was, they told me after church, it was like, like, uh, good night. I, I don't know if it was like 500, 700, 500 people watching this morning and 80 households houses and people in, in, in England and uh, all of the United States was watching this morning when sending in comments. Um, so hallelujah, wherever this is going, we're glad you're with us tonight. And so at, uh, once again, that's post office box 177 Nebo, N-E-B-O, North Carolina, 28761. If you can help, uh, that'd be a good time, be a good 
time to do it during these times. The government's probably not going to help us. So uh, I hope everybody will do their part. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all you've done for us. We pray now that you bless this offering tonight. Let it be just what you want it to be for the glory of God. Have you in our lives. Bless those that give and those that don't even have anything to give. I pray you bless them and help us to do what's right with our money. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. of the Bales family and they don't have to practice social distancing because they all live in the same house and uh, that boy put his guitar on upside down and get it right we'll hear, we'll hear in a minute all right sister are y'all ready to sing a good one tonight now this young lady right here is going to take a shouting spell I'm just warning you she'll take a shouting spell and run laps around this building I've seen her do it many a times <laughs> but uh, uh, y'all just don't pay no attention if I haven't just Miss Desi, all y'all, Miss Shelly, uh, Kelly, y'all file right in there behind there. Just make some laps here. But Steve, y'all, all y'all back yonder in the back rooms, uh, y'all do the same thing. All right, here we go. They're going to sing for Oh, I found a better way. Brighter paths for my feet. My heart is so complete. I found a better way. And since I found the church, Oh, I found a place to pray, and there I found the Lord, I found a better way. Don't look for me to go where I used to go before, I don't go there anymore, I found a better way. Don't look for me to say the things I used to say before, I don't say them anymore, I found a better way. Oh, I found a better way, brighter paths for my feet. My heart is so complete, I found a better way. And since I found the church, oh, I found a place to pray. And there I found the Lord, I found a better way. Don't look for me to be just like I used to be. There has been a change in me, I found a better way. Oh, I may not walk so proud, and I may not boast so loud, but I'm bound for heaven now, I found a better way. Oh, I found a better way, brighter paths for my feet. My heart is so complete, I found a better way. And since I found the church, oh, I found a place to pray. And there I found the Lord, I found a better way. And since I found the church, oh, I found a place to pray. And there I found the Lord, I found a better way. Amen. Enjoy that. Say amen. Thank y'all. I appreciate that, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. I found a better way, too. Hope you have also. Uh, we're going to get right into the Word of God here this evening. So all you folks at home, hither and thither and yonder and abroad, get your Bibles out, turn to Psalm 127, and uh, then we're going gonna, gonna to bring a few thoughts here tonight. Uh, now, some of you that were here this morning and not here tonight, I don't know why you didn't come tonight unless you just want to lay out, but you should be here because that knocks other people out of coming. So uh, come on back or tell us if you ain't coming. We'll let other people come. We've got people standing in line wanting to come and uh, begging to come. And so uh, if you're going to not come, tell us, uh, uh, because at least somebody have your spot. Now, Psalm 127, tonight, uh, let's look at uh, verse 1, verse 1, and uh, we'll, we'll start there this evening. I'm going to preach about uh, your kids, and um, here's what I'm going to preach about tonight. The ministerial way of saying this, 
is raising kids in hard times. The plain old way me and you talk, old redneck, hillbilly, North Carolina language is how to keep from killing your kids during a crisis or them killing you. Uh, so you understand that a little better. Number Psalm 127, seen a picture of this woman, uh, that old woman, she must have been about 90, and they said, this is so-and-so, she's 31 years old after two months of, or a month of quarantining with her kids. Uh, Psalm 127, verse 1, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, look at this, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb, his reward. Children are a reward from God. Not a curse, they're a blessing. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man. It broke is the man, uh, but happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. They shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Now, I want to preach about your kids here tonight, and I want to say three things about it. And the first thing I want to say is children are a blessing. Children are a blessing. The Bible says their kids are a gift from God. I wanted to, to say this especially. For all you that are home with your children, I've had, I don't know how many ladies say, Lord, I don't want to get these kids out of here. They're driving me crazy. And mamas are mad at kids and kids are mad at mamas. And uh, there's a lot of fuss. There's a lot of uh, domestic violence you know, you know, uh, as a result of people being cooped up. I mean, I can't imagine what it'd be like to be in New York City in an apartment about half as big as this choir with five kids and a drunk husband and snow outside. I can't imagine how terrible that must be. Uh, and my heart goes out to people, millions of that are living like that, millions uh, in this country. So uh, I understand the frustration, but children are a blessing. When you, when you uh, have a child, it is a gift of God to your home. Now, I want to illustrate tonight. Bring me Frank. Come here, Frank. Uh, Frank's going to come up here and help me tonight. Just a second. Uh, and uh, come here, Frank. I want to show him. Get him up close here, Andy. Now, this right here, everybody knows the Frankster. Everybody from here and father and young on internet and different countries and everything knows Frankie. Did you know that Frankie is a gift from God? Every kid in the world. He's not our uh, biological child, but he is a child. That means he's just as much a child as any other child in this world. Little Frankie right here. Has an eternal soul, don't you? Wave at him. Wave at him. Little Frankie, little Frankie has an eternal soul. He's going to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever somewhere. You think about that. Every child. My girls tonight are all watching. They, they better be. They claim they are. All watching uh, from home tonight with their children. And uh, my, my, my daughters tonight, um, the first, when we first Brought Carrie home from the hospital. She was born on Saturday, uh, on I think Wednesday or some. Back then they kept you in the hospital a lot longer. She came home on Saturday. We had her in church Sunday morning. That was not soon enough. Uh, but we uh, we had all the girls in church their whole life. Now we have these three: Ethan, Molly, and Frank. And uh, and that that's that's a that's a gift from God uh, through some circumstances that were not his fault. He wound up in our care, and uh, he's, he's, he's just as much a child as, as, as any other child. He's just as much a child as Donald Trump's son, Baron. He's just as much a child as the Prince William and all them, uh, and England, the king, he's just as much. Little Frankie, uh, a lot of times we say, oh, them little old kids, them bus kids, they're just in the way. Every single one of those children, those that you've got at home, are a gift from God. You think about all the people. I heard about it the other day. Uh, a seven-week-old died from the coronavirus. I think it had some respiratory problems, but that, that was the youngest person who has died with the coronavirus. And I thought, how sad. How sad that is. How sad that is. But all of them's precious. They have inside of them. They have inside of them. Amen. 
I think all these men here need some of them orange pants like that. I do. Them look sharp. Amen. Uh, but anyway, all right, Frank, go back there to go back there to where Marty and them are. Take him back there, Marty. And um, I, I want you to think about your kids as I bring this message. What a blessing. What a blessing. When we brought Carrie home, and I remember looking at that baby for the first time I saw her. And I was uh, 21, I think. And all of a sudden, buddy, reality slapped me in the face. And I thought, oh, my goodness. That's a human being. I'm responsible for it. I mean, I, it, it, it's up to me if they eat. It's up to me where they live. It's up to me. That'll make you do some growing up or should uh, really, really, really quick. And children are a blessing. They're a blessing to think about people that, that have no kind of attachment to their own flesh and blood kids. It, it boggles my mind. And that a, that, a, that a man or especially a woman could walk off and just leave their kids is just it, it's something that we, it's hard for us to even understand. The Bible calls that without natural affection. Let me tell you something, people. A dog will fight you if you try to take their puppies. A chicken. You get a chicken, try to take them dibbies, and she'll claw you and fight you. Do you kill her to try to protect her young? There's something wrong with human beings that can just turn their back on or walk, or especially be mean or cruel or, or abuse a child in any way. You can abuse your children verbally. You can you can be tyrannical and mean over them. You can abuse them physically. You can abuse them sexually. That's just sickening and hard to imagine. That children are a blessing that God has given us with. What joy they bring. They're never a dull moment. I mean, one lady said, when, when you take a three-year-old and put him down to sleep, you can really say, I've worked from sun up to sun down. And uh, that you sure can. And so all you folks at home, I understand that. And I'm going to say something else too. All you ladies out there tonight, you, you're uh, being pressured by this world to make you feel like you're just some kind of a, a nut or a loser or a, a subpar person because you don't have a, quote, career and you stay home and raise your... Don't you let that demonic doctrine affect you one bit. If God's give you children, the highest calling you can possibly have is to stay with those children and raise those children and teach them about the Lord Jesus Christ and put the word of God in their heart. Hey, hey, I know there, there's, I know there's some celebrities are, they're crazy. They go there and say, I don't want to be tied down with a bunch of snotty nosed young'uns. I want my freedom. I want my career. I don't want stretch marks. I don't want, I don't want to be responsible for them. Well, there's something wrong with somebody like that. God put it in us to want children. God put it in a woman to want children. God put it in a man to father children. And children are a blessing. You know what I've noticed about children being a blessing? I, I used to think God gave us children so that we could raise them. I later found out God gave us children so they can help raise us. We do it. They help us. Have you ever seen yourself in your kids? Have you ever, have you ever, uh, your kid ever acted a certain way? And you think, what's wrong with you? And the Lord say, they're just doing like you do. They're just acting just like you act. They got that from you. Uh, that helps you to grow up. And it helps you learn many, many, many valuable lessons. I remember many a time. When uh, when I uh, when my girls was little, I would I would just think I'm not think amazed, and I think that's exactly how I do God. I'd say do this, and say, Daddy, I don't want to. I thought that's exactly how I do the Lord. The Lord deals with me about something, and I said, ah, I don't want. And, uh, and you you start seeing yourself in your kids. And I know all of you at home, uh, all y'all that are sitting right beside them right now, you're sitting on the couch, or you got one of them big couches, one of them's over there and one of them's over there. I want all of you to look at your mama right now. All of y'all, look at your mama right now and say, Mom, I love you. And I want you mamas to look at your kids and say, little br darling, I love you. I, I want you to do it right now. I want you to do it right now. Amen. Children are a blessing. I think I heard somebody out yonder uh, in, in TV land uh, telling each other you love them. And this little old girl one time, uh, she uh, she went to spend the night with these people. And uh, they all went to bed and they didn't go to church. And uh, they was all getting ready to go to bed. And she's getting ready to lay down. And she said, uh, don't y'all pray before you go to bed like our family does? They said, no. Do you? She said, yes. We always pray at my house. 
And they said, well, why don't you pray then? And she said, she got down and she said, dear Lord, I can't remember my prayers and I'm staying with people that don't know none. And that was it. That was her prayer. I can't write that. I said, good, good. That's good. They're a blessing. You know what I you know why I like to be around kids? And I've y'all know me, you know me, my ministry. I've always been, I'm always way more comfortable in a room full of young teenagers or kids than I am uh, adults. I, I've just always been like that. There's something in me. Never did get past about 13 or 14, and uh, that's fine. Leave me alone. I want to stop there. I'm just fine right where the Lord stopped me. And uh, I, 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 I'm more at home with the kids because they, they, they're more honest. They're more honest. They don't fake it like adults do. I mean, if they, if they think you're weird, they just look at you like that. Uh, if they think you're crazy, they, they tell you you're, you're crazy. I mean, um, I remember Corey, she I hope she's watching right now, my youngest one. She used to get, uh, get us like this, and we were wrestling around in the floor, and she'd grab you like that by the neck. And you'd say, oh, let go, oh, let go, oh, let go, oh, let go. And she'd say, what's the magic word? I'd say, oh, let go, oh, let go. She'd say, what's the magic word? And say, we'd say, I don't know, what is it? She said it starts with M and ends with Ursi. And, and you know, so you've heard that also about me. When you cry for mercy, they let you go. I, that's what I like. Children are a blessing. But then I want to say secondly tonight, quickly. Let me say secondly tonight, children are amazing. They're absolutely amazing. They, they never cease to amaze you with the way they think. Frankie's just learning how to talk. Little Big T, he's watching also this evening. I hope he is. He's ahead of Frankie. He's talking really, really good. And it's amazing when they start putting sentences together. When they get about uh, one and a half, two, two and a half. I mean, they just all of a sudden just start. Just start. He's saying, uh, "Yeah, uh, mommy, I want to go do that. Mom, I died. I, you know that like that." And it, it just it, it amazes me the way they think. Some the other day he was going, "I think trick." I thought, I'd really love to know what he's saying. Uh, I have no idea, no idea. Sometimes you can sort of figure it out because he's pointing at something or something like that, but I, I, they just amaze me. I had a little boy one time uh, years ago, and uh, they said this little boy come in. He said, uh, he said, Mama, we learned all kinds of things at church. He said, uh, now I know, I know who the Virgin Mary is now, but who is the King James Virgin? Uh, he, <laughs> he, had all, he had it all wrong like that. He, the kid come in one day. He said, he, uh, he come in, he said, oh, Mama, you know, Papa died last week. We had Grandpa we had his funeral. He said, Grandpa can't see a thing in heaven, Mama. His glasses is laying in there beside his bed. Uh, they, the way they think, the way they think, just I, I love it. I, I love the uh, uh, kid asked her, the teacher asked the kid one day. She said, all right, boys and girls, who's Aaron? One of Moses' brother, you know? And I said, I don't know, but I bet you he's the first one in the telephone book. A-A-R-O-N. Yes, sir. That's good. That's the way their little minds work. That's a blessing. Amen. That's right. Boy, I'm, I said a teacher one time, she was telling uh, uh, kids come in, a little boy come in, he said, teacher, my dog got killed. He's laying out there in the road and he's dead. And the little teacher thought she'd be real spiritual and said, that's okay, honey. Your little, God, your little dog is up in heaven with God. And he said, what does God want with a dead dog? <laughs> Good theology. God don't want nothing with a dead dog. Uh, uh, l- listen, brother, I- I'm telling you, two boys said one time, they're sitting side by side and they've been reading the Bible and Bible study at, at, at church. And one of them said, man, that big old boat out there in that ark. I bet Noah sure did fish, do a lot of fishing when he was out there on that boat. And the other said, he did not. He didn't have but two worms. I thought, yeah, <laughs> pretty smart, huh? I mean, I wouldn't have thought of that. I, I wouldn't have thought of that. This is no kidding. Don't get mad at me. This is no kidding. One time up in Marion at New Manor at the school, uh, we had these kids come home and uh, it was in January and after the holidays and the kid come home and told her mama, they said, now mama, what are we going to say? She come home and said, mama, I uh, said, guess what we're going to do? And tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to show our tails. And mama said, what? 
They said, right, Mama, tomorrow we're going to show our tail. She said, you are not. You quit talking like it. Uh-huh, teacher said, we're going to show our tail. And they called the teacher said, no, we're going to have show and tail. Show and tail tomorrow. <laughs> uh, you, they, they get it wrong sometimes, but Lord have mercy. Uh, what a blessing. Guy said, little kids, I can tell you a bunch of stories like this. I got a bunch of them. Uh, uh, the two kids on the day were looking at that rainbow and they was looking up in the sky like that. And one of them looked up and he said, man, man, isn't God an artist? Look at all them colors. And that said, he sure is. And think about it. He done every bit of that with his left hand. And he said, what? He said, yeah, I think how he could do. He done that with his left hand. He said, wow, where did he get that? And he said, well, the Bible said Jesus is sitting on his right hand. That ain't the way it works. That's not what that means. But that's the way they do. You know, sometimes you have to you have to explain to them what you're talking about. And all you people at home with your kids tonight, and this is partly for them. This is the reason I'm doing this, partly for the kids at home, so they won't sit there bored for the next little bit. Uh, they they need to have a little boy and girl. They, the teacher told them to draw pictures and illustrate Bible stories, and they want them to draw this airplane, and it had a man, and a woman sitting in the back, and a man flying. Vroom, Taking off like that. And they said, now, honey, who is that? He said, that's Mary and Joseph, and they're flat out of Egypt. And the teacher said, oh, really? Yes, that's right. They're... And he said, well, who's that flying the plane? He said, that's Pontius the pilot. Don't you know better than that? That's the way they think. That's just that's just the, the, the way they are. I heard about two kids one time, uh, there's, or that's kids one time, and, they, and the, the mama that's having a revival, and the pastor had invited to visit an evangelist, and the, uh, or the the family had invited the pastor and the visiting evangelist over to eat supper. The way people used to do back in the old days when you'd have revival. Uh, Monday would go somewhere, Tuesday they'd go somewhere, Wednesday back when I started preaching revival. I was all over the mountains up there in Burnsville and Newland, Avery County, Mitchell County. All in, they'd all want you to come feed the preacher. They, I I never did like to do it because I didn't want to. I wanted to spend the last hour or two getting ready for church. and didn't like to preach on a full stomach, but they wanted to do it. And so we went, and the pastor would say, you meet me at 5 o'clock. We're going to this house. Tuesday, meet over here, sister so-and-so. Boy, they'd have some meals now. Right? If I wasn't so tore up about worrying about preaching, I could have really enjoyed them. But I was always just, you know, dreading and praying and trying to get right. And uh, uh, they said uh, they was going to have the preachers over one time, the pastor and the evangelist. And... Uh, and uh, you know, the mother had everything right, and uh, she set the she set the meat down, she set the meatloaf down, she set the cornbread down, uh, she set the iced tea down, and the and the corn on the cob and the green beans, and had it in the and the rolls and everything. And she said, "Now, all right, now kids, y'all come on in here, y'all come on in here." And everybody sat around the table, and all the kids sat around. One little old boy about that high said, "Mama, where's the buzzer?" She said, son, shut up. Now, don't talk like that. The preacher sitting there, he said, where's Buzzard? Son, we're not having Buzzard. Now, he, well, you said them old Buzzards was coming over here. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, parents. Let me tell you something, parents. They'll tell on you if you ain't real careful. They will tell on you. Kids can repeat word for word everything mom and daddy should not have said. They sure can. They sure can. They, it's amazing. It's amazing how they can remember it. You have a fuss, they'll tell somebody. Well, mom and daddy fussed the other day. Yes, sir, they'll tell on you. You better live right. You better watch what you say in front of them. Uh, they are amazing. They're, they're amazingly honest. Two kids went in a modern art exhibit. You know, where it looks like one of them Scud missiles exploded. You know, you got to go to college to appreciate that. Just a big pile of iron spray painted and that's modern art and they looked at one of them pictures up there on the wall and it looked like where somebody just throwed paint up against it and everybody was an ooh and an ah and the one kid punched his buddy said let's get out of here before somebody says we did it <laughs> that, was his, that was their assessment of modern art I'm telling you they are amazing they are amazing another time the preacher was coming over to eat and, uh, and the woman said uh, alright kids uh, uh, let's all get down here and pray. There said the preacher. There said the evangelist. We're all going to pray. And she said, she wanted to impress the preacher. said, now, Johnny, you you ask the blessing. And he said, no, I don't, I don't know who I want to. Honey, honey, ask the blessing. You ask the blessing, baby. You, well, on the food, she wanted to impress him. And he said, I don't know what to say. Just say what mommy said. And so they bowed their head and he said, 
Lord, why did I invite these people over here on a hot day like this? That's what mommy said. That's what mommy said. I'm telling you tonight, children are amazing. Uh, children are my, I, we let a little boy of the Lord one time, me and one of our deacons up in Marion. And uh, some of you people listening probably would know uh, the young man I'm talking about. Little boy about eight or nine years old and he's really heavy. And uh, uh, he just, he's cute like that. He, he looked, everybody liked him just like he was. He, he was happy and laughed all the time and he, he wanted to get saved. So he got down on the front row and me and one of the deacons led him to the Lord. I think he was 11 years old at that time. And we prayed and he, he said, Gary, uh, one of our deacons, he said, Gary, did you ask the Lord to save you? He said, yes, I did. He said, Gary, do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, yes, I did. He said, Gary, if you died right now, you'd go to heaven. He said, yes, I would. Yes, I would. And uh, finally, uh, we looked at him and said, all right, Gary, you got any questions? He said, yes. I said, all right, shoot. So I, I was ready for anything. Okay, you theological question, where heaven, hell, Jesus, the, the blood, shoot. He said, what am I going to do about this fat? <laughs> it just got saved. I said, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, it, isn't it amazing? Now, you think you're so smart, they'll ask you a question that you have no clue how to answer. They'll do it. They'll do it. They'll stump you. I don't care how much of a genius you think you are. Uh, they, they got human nature. I've seen my, I've seen my, fa my faults and pluses coming out in my girls. I feel my parents' faults and good things and bad coming through me, can't you? You can feel, uh, maybe your parents had a bad temper. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're, uh, I have a lot of pride or your parents. You can feel that good and bad coming through you. And you can see it going through right into your kids. Your good points and your bad. So try to beat down that, that bad part and keep it in check. And keep that um, uh, done, you know, underneath the precious power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and do it right. And the Lord will bless you for it. Like a boy said, uh, these kids said one time there's... Uh, uh, in a fight, and the brothers come in. He said, "All right, who started this fight?" And his brother said, "It all started when he hit me back." See that? That's human nature. That means I hit him first. But they'll, their little minds will connive and and wiggle and twist. They get that from you. So you better learn to tell them. We have, we have to tell Molly all the time. She t Kelly tells Molly all the time. Molly, just tell the truth. You don't be in trouble. Just tell the truth. You know how they'll come in and they'll say, "Who did that?" And they'll say, "Well, I saw so and so." You know, they'll 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 do anything, and they think you're going to kill them or something. I always told my girls, I say, "You'd be in a lot less trouble just to tell the truth. You'll have less punishment than than lie, because the lying's worse than what you did." And so teach them. Teach them to tell the truth in the right way. Children are amazing. Children are amazing. One little boy got up. He told the Lord one night. He said, Lord, I heard that you loved everybody in the world. That must be awful hard because I ain't got but two brothers and sisters. Now, it's hard for me to love them. And he's being honest. He's being honest. That's the way it is sometimes. That's the way it is. Now, children are amazing. And then thirdly tonight, and I'll say this and I'll be through, children are a responsibility. I want to get serious here tonight. Children are a responsibility. All you parents, listen at home this evening, or at work, or in your car, or wherever you are right now, you have a responsibility to God. You will answer for your child. You will answer for how you live in front of them. You will answer for what you allowed them to do. You will answer to how you train them. You will answer to what you portrayed as important you will answer what you taught them about priorities what's most important you will answer to God one day for your children they are a responsibility scary responsibility you have a responsibility to love them to love that child that means you parents are going to have to get out of bed in the morning and get your own heart right with God and filled with the Lord and patience and grace before they ever get up. 
If they're up and you're still laying in the bed and they're running around the house and then you're going to get grouchy and hateful and bite their head off and be mean to them and ugly and it ain't, them, it ain't their fault, it's yours for not being right with God. You have a responsibility to love those children. Not only do you have a responsibility to love them, you have a responsibility to discipline them. You have a responsibility to discipline them. I know a lot of people go overboard on discipline. A lot of people go underboard on discipline. Uh, you know how, how we teach here? We teach the Bible way of discipline. If you don't, if you let that kid run wild and think it's cute, one of these days, it ain't going to want to do nothing. Nobody tells it, including its boss, including its school teacher, including the principal, including the cops, and including God. You have to teach them Somebody is, is over, over you in authority, and you have to learn to obey. Now, that's not an easy, ta- that's not an easy thing to do. I, I know people they said guys had wrote books on how to raise kids until theirs got big enough, and then they throwed their books away and figured out they didn't know half what. You don't know half. Them people don't know half what they think they do. All these one, two, three, four, do this, do this, do this. Your kids will turn out right. You, that ain't no guarantee of nothing. I tell you what you better do. You better stay on your knees. You better stay in the book. You better live right in front of them and beg God daily to work in your kid's heart and give you the, 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 the guts and, the, and the, the dedication to live right in front of them. And that still don't guarantee everything. You don't know what one of your kids is liable to do. You better be careful about saying, I'd never let one of my kids do such a thing. You better be careful about that kind of talk. They're liable to break your heart one day. You better, you better pray. You better learn how to discipline them while they're young. I'll give you just a few points on discipline and a thought or two and I'm done. Point one on discipline. Always give the same punishment for the same crime. That You're teaching them there's limits by doing that. In other words... If he takes his chocolate milk into the living room or whatever, I told you you couldn't do that. If you do it again, there's going to be punishment. Not spill it, just take it in there. Some people let them take it in there and fuss at them, take it in there and fuss at them. Then when they spill it, whip them. You can't, don't whip somebody for an accident, right? Just because it got on your nerves and you don't want to clean it up. That's the wrong way to parent. You let the same punishment be for the same crime. I, I know, I know, kids that don't never know what they can do and what they can't do because one day they can do something and Mama's in a good mood and lets it go. Next day, Mama's in a bad mood and she knocks her head off. That's inconsistency on the parent, and you'll you'll never. It'd be like me going up the road over here one day and the cops stop me and say, "Mr. Castle, you're speeding. I'm gonna give you a ticket." And I said, "Well, I came up through here yesterday and you were sitting right there and never mind." Well, I was in a good mood yesterday. The, co- the law says a certain speed. You go that speed, you, you're, you're considered breaking the law. Now, that's, you, have to, you have to let certain limits be on kids. Look, this, this will not be tolerated. This, uh, and, and my kids, uh, they're all three at home. Maybe I'm, I sometimes was too easy on them. I sometimes was too hard on them. Sometimes I, made, sometimes I was hard on them because they're the preacher's kids, and I wouldn't let them do stuff even that other kids got to do because of the pressure and the and people in the community and everything. And I always told my girls, I said, girls, I'll make this up to you. Somehow I'm going to let y'all do stuff to make it up. And I tried. I tried, y'all. And I know y'all listened to me tonight, and I tried. I wasn't perfect, but I did try. Sometimes I was too rough. Sometimes I was too loose. But you've got to let them realize the same punishment for the same crime. Number two, always give the punishment. In other words, if you say, if you touch that, I'm going to smack your hand. And they touch it, smack their hand. Don't, don't say, I told you, boys. I've heard somebody say, turn that down. About five minutes later. If you don't turn that down, I'm going to come in there and whip you. About ten minutes later. If you don't turn that down, I'm going to come in there and whip. I've been sitting talking to people in their house, and that's their conversation between them. Kid don't even pay no attention to it. He knows she don't mean one word of that. And then she looks at me and says, I just don't know what I'm going to do with that boy. Well, I'm saying, I know what I'd do with him. Uh, but, she, but uh, you know, always give the punishment. Number three, when should a child be disciplined? And the answer is, girls, you start when they're about two years old, boys much earlier 
<laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. As soon as they know they're doing wrong. Number four, do it consistently or you'll confuse them and defeat your entire purpose. The Bible said this one is to teach them. Uh, and by the way, that's my third point, to teach them. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6 teaches you to put those scriptures in your house. Put those scriptures up in your house. That's, that's an Old Testament principle, but it's definitely a great idea. Get, you, get you some of these scriptures. Um, somebody, somebody takes these signs, puts them on trees, takes them out. Let your kids see the Word of God. We've got on our mantle over the fireplace in, in our house at home. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Been there 30 years. And everybody that comes to my house sees that verse of Scripture. We've got other Scriptures hanging out. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, oh, that's fanatical. No, uh, no, that's normal for a Christian. Put the Word of God up in their house. Uh, take them to church. Take them to a good church. Take them to the right kind of church. Uh, take them to a church where you know they'll hear the Bible preached. Take them to a church where they'll feel conviction when they do wrong. Listen, I don't, well, we got, Ethan's a teenager, Molly's 10. But um, if, if I wasn't the pastor, I would take my kid where I knew there's going to hear a preacher preach on stuff that teenagers needed, like the mute drugs and and uh, and fornication and and the world and rock and roll and stuff. I'd want them to hear that. Amen. I wouldn't want to take them to a church where they played rock and roll. For heaven's sake, let them know it's wrong, and take them to a church where they hear what's right and what's wrong. Like take them to a church where they hear the Bible taught. Take them to a church where they know that, the, that you're going to answer to God one day. Take them to a church where it gets scared. They get scared once in a while. I think sometimes we sit in church, it ought to scare. There ought to be a fear of God settle over us when we're at the house of God. I'll never forget uh, a boy one time, a young man got saved. And, and uh, this young man wanted to go with his friends, give out tracts. And uh, his daddy was a preacher. And his mom was a preacher's wife. And I remember thinking, something ain't right with these people. And the boy got on fire for God. And we'd all go give out tracts and stuff. And she looked at the boys one day and she said, listen, boys, you can't save the world. And poured the preacher's wife poured cold water on us. Now, my pastor's wife never did that. Never. Lordy mercy. She'd say, Danny, I'm so proud of you, boy. She's a little Miss Ruth Hollifield. She's about that tall, godly woman. I never seen her when she wasn't clothed from here to here. I'm never, never. I mean, this is a godly woman. She, I think she finally lived to be about 90. And she said, Oh, Danny, I'm so proud of you boys. You boys keep going and keep preaching and keep this other preacher's wife. She said, uh, y'all can't win the world now. She she poured cold water on us. Well, this boy didn't go go with us to give out tracks, and he got backslid and got in a rock and roll band. And uh, one day, I was, I was I think I was on my way to church that morning, and a guy flagged me down. I was back before cell phones and stuff, and I pulled over like that, and he said, "Did you hear about so and so?" I said, "Nope." Him and the boys in the band was out last night, and hit a ditch, and four of them was killed instantly, just like that, instantly. And I wasn't then. I think I was wasn't about nineteen or twenty then, and I thought. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now that may happen to one of my kids, one of your kids. We don't ever know what's going to happen to them. But I don't ever want to discourage one of mine from doing right. People ask me all the time, Brother Danny, my, my little kid's six, seven years old. They want to go to the altar. What should I do? I'm, Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them get up here and pray. Come up here and pray with them. Don't be embarrassed. I've seen people, I've seen their parents say, no, you can't do that. Even, even when they're 11, 12, 13. And that's a big, big mistake. Can I say this to you, parents? You're going to give an account to God one day for how you raise your children. Um, uh, I, I believe there'll be kids at the judgment curse their parents. and Say, mama, you taught me how to dance. Mama, you taught me how to drink. You taught me how to chase boys. Mama, I hate you. Mama, I'm going to hell now and I hate you. I believe that'll happen one day at the great white throne judgment. There'll be boys that say, Daddy, you taught me to worship 
the almighty dollar. Daddy, you taught me to cuss. You taught me to lie. You taught me to cheat. Daddy, you never talked to me about God. I believe that'll happen at the judgment one of these days. You're going to give an account to God for the example you set in front of your children. It's a responsibility. God help us as parents to do the right thing. Let's stand with our heads bowed. You there at home, just bow your head, please. Close your eyes. We're going to pray for a minute before we go. Miss Desi's coming to the piano. Every head bow. Kids at home, bow your head. Moms and daddy, please bow your head, close your eyes. All you kids right now, I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I saved? Do I know I'm saved? You can be saved right there. You can be saved at home. We may never even get to come back to church. We don't know how long this mess is going to last. And we don't know. Jesus may be coming. The Lord may be just getting us ready for his coming. Wouldn't that be great? Are you sure you're ready? She's playing softly. Why don't you ask the Lord? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, please. I believe that you died for my sin, Jesus. And I'm sorry for my sin. And right now, as best I possibly can, I trust you as my Savior. Have your way in our hearts and lives. Do what needs to be done in every heart here tonight, Lord. And those that are listening, I pray for every parent listening to me tonight, me included, Miss Kelly included, every person here, every those that are listening around the world, help every one of us be the kind of parent you'd have us to be. Lord, forgive us where we failed, where we failed our kids. Help us to serve you, honor you. Lord, we, we want you to be good to us. Help us be good to them. We want you to grant our request. Let us grant their request. We want you to have mercy on us. Let us have mercy on them. Please, Lord Jesus, do that in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you bless every family in our church. I pray you'd work it out that we could all be back here together soon. Give us good weather for next Sunday that we could all meet back here in the parking lot and see each other, even if it's at a distance. I pray the Holy Spirit of God will come and do great and mighty things in our hearts and in our lives. Take us and use us for your glory. We'll thank you for what you do. Meet back here with us Wednesday. I pray for our leaders. I pray for our, our governors and our president and the congressman and the, the police and the world leaders around other parts in the world. God gives somebody enough sense to do the right thing. Please, Lord, to get us out of this mess. God, I pray that revival will come to our country. Souls will be saved as a result of it. Thank you for the ones that we've already heard about getting saved, getting right. I pray your will will be done in our hearts. Go with us this week. Keep us safe. I pray you'd keep that bubble of protection over our family, over my girls, their family, the grandkids, sons-in-laws. I pray for our church family that you keep that bubble of protection over us. God, I ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right. Well, amen. We'll stop right there tonight. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night. Uh, we got a lot of folks just begging to come to church. So if you'll text me, we'll work it out. Because if some of y'all ain't going to come, Tell me, and we'll let somebody else come and take your place. We're having the musicians, we're having the the uh, you know the uh, work of the, the sound men and all, and then other people are sort of rotating around. Appreciate everybody having a good attitude about it. But you, if you want to come, let me know, and we'll I'll sort of tell you what service we can come, and uh, we'll try to stay within our limits and honor that and do right. Okay, all right. Now next Sunday you're going to come in this way. All you that are watching at home, come around this way. They're going to give you a little piece of paper, uh, like so it looks like that and tell you how to park, and we'll be set up, pray about the weather, and Lord willing, we're going to uh, work on it Friday evening. Uh, we have a wedding here Friday, by the way, actually, at 2 o'clock. Dylan and Lisa are going to go ahead and get married. You're not invited, sorry. Uh, but uh, there's their fam there's their parents, it's about them, me and their parents, about all that can get in here. But we'll uh, we'll see that, okay? All right, God bless you. I appreciate you coming. Everybody have a good week. We'll see you Wednesday. Go ahead.